brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's cereal. The best to you each morning. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left tonight, a great pleasure, a very funny fellow who's going to open next Wednesday night at the Diplomat in Hollywood, Florida, the marvelous Buddy Hackett. introduce a young lady that has made fame and fortune throughout the 50 states and all over most of the world. A girl I'm sure you're going to love and enjoy who will overwhelm you with her magnificence and her sheer beauty is only overwhelmed by the largeness of her heart. I forgot her name. Arlene Francis. felt as though I ought to come on wearing purple trunks. <laughs> and now a gentleman who's in a very happy frame of mind, too, because tonight he leaves, or tomorrow morning, for El Paso, Stanford, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Points West, and we're going to miss him for three whole weeks, but you're going to have him out there, Mr. Bennett, sir. Well, you know, the free Chinese people all over the world are celebrating their new year tonight. It's the year of the tiger. <laughs> and we have a tiger on what's by line, too. I can hear him snarling as they let him out of his cage. <laughs> Here he comes, old Tiger John Daly. That's a lovely picture of Bennett, isn't it? <coughs> San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Points West. <laughs> like about 300 miles out in the Pacific. <laughs> and with no flippers. <laughs> uh, Bennett, we hope you have a wonderful time out in the West. And they're lucky to have you, even for three weeks. We mean that. We hope they feel the same way when you come back. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have. I think some interesting tricks we're going to play on our friends on the panel tonight. Some interesting occupations and some very nice people who brought them to the theater. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And now the first surprise for the members of the panel. Blindfold should be put on panel because we have good reason to want to have you blindfolded for our first challenger. Are the blindfolds in place now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, everybody's ready. Just say hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, Hi. hello. Hello. All right, well, our okay. first contestant enter and sign in, please. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you know how we keep score? Uh-huh. All right, in that event, let's let the folks in the theater and those who are watching at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Needless to say, you're blindfolded because we have reason to believe that some element of identification would uh, tell too much to one or more members of the panel. We will, however, tell you that our guest is self-employed and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with um, uh, Arlene Francis. Does your service have anything to do with the entertainment business? Yep. Is it uh, the picture business? A little, very small pictures. Six 
16 millimeter. Um, are you also associated with another branch of the entertainment business? Yep. The theater? Nope. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Would that other branch of the service possibly be television? Uh-huh. Uh, have you got anything to do with this particular What's My Line show? Yep. Uh, do you own it or used to own it or now own it with CBS? <laughs> well, don't be technical. What's <laughs> an entitlement for you? Right. You all right. Hey. Thank you. First of all, I want to congratulate Mark and Bill. I think they did a beautiful job of, with their voices, but we didn't get away with what we thought no, we might have a chance to get away. And don't, and don't flip the cards and give them $50. I, I need the money. Oh, I think that's the least I can do. Thank you. But there's a reason for all this that I think perhaps some of the folks in the theater and some of the folks at home will understand. This is actually our 12th anniversary. We are beginning our 13th year on the air with What's My Line and Mark and Bill. <laughs> Mark and Bill are the originators of what we hope you all have felt was good fun over the, the many years that we've been on. Marcus, do you remember what it was like when we started back 12 long years ago? I remember very well, John. And you know, 12 years is a big chunk of time out of anyone's life. But in television, of course, it spans practically the entire life of that medium. And I was thinking, uh, before we were about to make our appearance, of what was going on back in February of 1950 when What's My Line made its uh, first appearance on the air. And the mystery guest of two weeks ago, Tuesday Weld, was six years old. Uh, <laughs> Dwight Eisenhower was living up at Morningside Heights. He was the president of Columbia University. The Korean War had not yet started. Uh, phone calls were a nickel. Uh, a young girl, 17 years of age, Elizabeth Taylor, was making a feature movie called Father of the Bride. Uh, a young man from Boston was in his second term in Congress. He was age 33. His name was Jack Kennedy. Uh, Dorothy, your daughter, Jill, was six years old. Arlene, yes, she was. I figured it out, right? Uh, Arlene, uh, Peter Gable was three. That's right. And Jonathan Surf Bennett was three. And I was only six like Tuesday Well. <laughs> and as for you, John, and Bill and me, we had a little less money and considerably more hair. Yes, and sometimes I think a great deal more fun. But we did not come here merely to uh, reminisce intramurally. Pardon with... me, sir, but are you inferring that I didn't exist in <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, we are very grateful to have you with us on our birthday party. And, but as I say, we're not here merely uh, to reminisce. We're also extremely grateful, as Bill will tell you. Well, Mark, now that you've made us all feel terribly much older than we'd like to feel, I'm sure Bennett and all agree. It is a reminiscent moment because February 2, 1950, we did our first show. Mm -hmm. And strangely, in the annals of our business, where you don't much stay together, we have mostly all stayed together. Gil Fates, our producer, is still our producer. Frank Heller, our director, is still our director. Bob Bach, our associate producer, and Ann Kamensky have still with, been with us. Fran Schroeder, John Daly. John, I think, should be thanked especially. Bennett Surf, of course, Arlene, Dorothy. And Buddy Hackett and Buddy Hackett for being with us tonight <laughs> with his rifles. But very frankly, you know, John has only missed four programs in 600 broadcasts. <laughs> well, yeah. That's true. And the only reason he missed them was because he was out of the country. 
And that's a fact that I reminded you on before air. Actually, I was surprised when you told me, Bill, because I didn't I remember exactly how many, but I was in the Far East in Laos for two, and I was in Moscow for one, and in Paris for a summit conference. Those are the four. I put them back <laughs> on the table. One, and Mark and I hope you'll continue for 12 more years. I emceed one of those, you remember? Right. Arlene, yes, sir. Arlene and, and, and I did and one, too. Arlene and late Ernie Kovacs drove me crazy that night. That is right. <laughs> John, we're taking up an awful lot of time. But one more thing before we go. Many it's people say, Many people say, <laughs> what accounts for the amazing popularity of the show over the years and of course it's very difficult to analyze uh, popularity but I will say that one of the most important reasons is because I think the people of America accept this panel not merely as entertainers but as friends in their home I think that's quite right and I'm happy to have had him for friends for all these years and you too both. thank you John nice to have you here. Well, now that we've had our birthday party panel, we'll go back to the old rules. All kicking and gouging is allowed, except you can't have any iron picks in your hand. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Dixie? Dixie Klein. Is that right? Is it, uh, Miss or Missy? Miss Klein, and where are you from, Miss Klein? Akron, Colorado. Akron, Colorado. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel, Miss Klein? Thank you. Now, would you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score, Miss Klein? Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Akron, Colorado. Panel, we will tell you that Miss Klein is self-employed and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, uh, Bennett Surf. Miss Klein, did you say Aquin, California? Colorado. Col Aquin, Colorado? Mm -hmm. Is is that up in the mountainous part of Colorado? No, it's on the plains. Well, that was a deucer, wasn't oh, it, wow. Bennett? <laughs> That's one down and nine to go, Miss Gilgallon. <laughs> Boy, you're good at this game. <laughs> Frank, Miss Klein, do you perform your services for both men and women? Yes. Uh, do you perform them indoors? Sometimes. You can also perform them out of doors. Yes. Uh, do you have an occupation that is also the occupation of many men? Yes. Would you say that more men in the United States do this than women? Yes. Uh, do you have, do you use tools in your work? Yes. Uh, are they anything that would apply to plastering or carpentering or doing anything around a house or a building? No. Nope. That's two down a day to go, Mr. Hackett. Well, I have a different way of attacking this sort of thing. <laughs> All I want you to do is concentrate in your mind, and I will just know that I get waves by just <laughs> think about uh you don't wear the type of clothing you're wearing now when you're performing the service do you no well i mean, I mean that's like a yes really you know <laughs> but i don't know how to phrase that i talk a different <laughs> see i i talk a different english than you do Mr. <laughs> i'll Buddy. tell you when i get a no see that? <laughs> <laughs> I will accept that the answer in that case was, yes, I do not. You yeah, continue. that's right. Thanks a lot. But I didn't have much education, just uh, went to three or four colleges to deliver furniture. Uh, uh, is there service that you perform, do you also uh, do it with children sometimes? Do you also do it with children? Do you also perform it for children? On specifically for children? At times, as well as adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you wear some special attire when performing this service? Yes. Uh, as part of this attire, like men's pants <laughs> or similar to it. In other words, do you wear slacks <clears throat> in the main when you're working? Or jeans. Or, or jeans. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, do you work with animals in performing this service? 
some time. Uh, do you work for the government in any way? Such as a forest ranger. <laughs> <laughs> No. You don't work for the government. No, that's three down and seven to go, Miss Benson. I thought she was a general. <laughs> Are you associated with different kinds of animals rather than just one breed of animal? Yes. Would you have anything to do in either a zoo or a zoo in a park? You mean as a normal practice of her, of her occupation, would she be in a zoo or a park? No, but would her profession lead her to association with zoos or parks? It could, I think, is the answer there. Mm -hmm. Do you train animals in any way? No. no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Klein, the, the kind of animals that you have something to do with have something very much in common? Is it one particular kind of animals? For instance, might it be, do you have anything to do with snakes? No. Nothing. Five down and five to go, no snakes. Miss Kilgallen? Miss Klein, do the animals that you deal with have legs? Yes. Uh, are they non-domesticated animals? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Hackett. Okay, buddy. Uh, they're not, they're, they're not, that means it's not wild. They're tame. They're tame animals. Tame animals. That lady with tame animals with jeans. Just let me go back. And from Denver, do you wear boots when you work? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, could you perform this service without boots? Uh, you get one of these sheep herders on here, you don't know what to do. Uh, is this service that you perform for people got to do with selling them something? No. Nope. Seven yeah. down and three to go, Miss Francis. Would you have anything to do with the hospitalization of animals? Sometimes. Do you have a, sometimes only? Then are you uh, would not would you be called a doctor or a veterinarian? Yes. All right. That's exactly right. Doctor Dixie Klein, veterinarian. You had, I believe, two years of pre-veterinary medicine and four years in, of uh, graduate work in medicine. And you are, I think, the only veterinarian in your area of Colorado, aren't you? Yes. What sort of a work day do you have to put in? It varies a lot. It does? What's the long, real long one, usually? From about 7 to 10. 7 to 10 in the morning? That's not bad. We were blocking yeah. right here. Oh, 7 to 10 p.m. I bet it is a long day. Well, I think that the profession is lucky to have one so attractive and so talented, and we're lucky to have you as our guest, and thank you for joining us in What's My Life. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our... Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends on the panel must blindfold themselves once again. The blindfold's all in place now, panel? Back on. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel. Uh, we change the rules a bit, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you primarily a motion picture star? I, uh, no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Hackett. Are you the thin one? <laughs> what? Well, uh, I, uh, are you speaking now of a part played in the, in the uh, cinema, The Thin no, Man? No, no, no. I'm talking about Mr. Sinatra. Oh, no. That's two down at eight to go, Miss Francis. Are you a performer in the medium of television? Uh, I, uh, oh, uh, sure, sure. Mr. Sir? 
Are you at present appearing in a show on or near Broadway? I, uh, no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. But have you appeared this season in a show on Broadway? On, st on a stage. What? On the, on the stage. On the stage, yes. No. The living stage. No. Not the living stage. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Hackett. Are you a singer? Uh, uh, professionally? Yeah, professionally. No. <laughs> Are you a comedian at other times? A comedian, I mean. <laughs> uh, at, at times. Mr. Sir? Have you been in New York in a nightclub or in a hotel room <clears throat> this season? Professionally. Professionally, yes. <laughs> uh, no, no. That no. makes it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would you say that your your most spectacular fame has been in the air in the area of television? I'd, I'd rather have John say it. I think. I think that that can be answered yes and very <laughs> unequivocally, Mr. Hackett. Do you have your own show on television at present? Yes. Miss Francis? Is it a once a week show? Yes. Mr. Sir? Can I take a guess? Yeah. 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 Danny Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. May I ask for a conference, please? You may have 20 right. seconds for a conference. Uh, does, does George Goble have his own show? No. No. Okay, no. I pass. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen passes, Mr. Hackett? Are you from the elder statesman school of comedians as opposed to the young juvenile handsomes ones like me? <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that is definitely no. That's eight out of two to go, Miss Francis. Uh, I know. Do you have a... Do you know what it is? Yeah, I think so. Well, say it. No, say it. I think it's Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> no? Uh, do you have an album? Yeah. Have you got a button-down mind? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's who it is. Who is it? Well, the Newhart? Bob Newhart? Bob Newhart. Bob Newhart. Why didn't you show up last night, you rat? <laughs> I, ta I talked to Buddy this past week. And couldn't remember if I had said I was going to be on the show tonight. Anymore. You told me you were going to be the mystery guest. Oh. <laughs> That's why you guessed it so quickly. But, but I didn't believe you because Steve Lawrence told me he was the mystery guest. <laughs> and Edie told me she was. Everyone told me they were. As soon as I said I'm going on, everyone I know said, I'm the mystery guest. <laughs> Bob Newhart is one of the most refreshing things that's happened to television, in my opinion in many, many years, his program on Wednesday night, 10 o'clock on NBC, I believe it is, mm -hmm. I find a complete delight. And Mrs. Daly and I nearly had to send for the doctor the night you did the takeoff on the PTA meeting. Yes. Remember when you were the teacher? It was one of the funniest things that I've, I've seen in a long, long time. More than that, though, I think I'm prouder of Bob for many reasons, and one of them is, is the fact that uh, he's an old, really an old television man. You used to be a technician and uh, director, I, I was producer, a writer. writer, and... Worked uh, out in Chicago, didn't you? I was talking tonight. We were on, uh, I had a man on the street show that was opposite Captain Kangaroo and Today. And in 16 weeks, we got four letters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's, that's barely until. I just want to give you one bit of hope because I know you've got a wonderful career stretching ahead of you, Bob. I never had that many, so you see, you're ahead <laughs> of the game. Thanks very much for being our guest. It was great fun to have Thank you, you with us on our birthday party. Thank you very much. Lots of Happy birthday. And we'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. And we've had a nice birthday party and good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night and many happy returns, John. Good night, buddy. Good night. Uh, good night, Mr. Daly. It's been nice visiting you here. It's been nice and I, having I you. I say good night, Arlene. Is that what you do? Like? Why not? Well, good night, Arlene. Good, good night. night. Good night. Hey, everybody, what do I care? Good night. <laughs> and thank you for the presents that you've brought over the years to our panel. 
And good night, Bennett, and have a good trip and a good vacation. Can I ask you one question, Ollie? Was that beautiful girl on the cover of Cosmopolitan this month you? I was on the cover, but I don't think it was a beautiful it's a girl. Lovely, but thank you. It's a lovely story by Maurice Alton. Right. About Arlene Cosmopolitan. And to you, John, be good while I'm away. I will, and you have a good trip. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Thompson. Johnny Olsen speaking.